All right. Praise Jesus. God bless you, people of God. God bless you. I'm just inviting people along. Praise God. Praise God. Go ahead and hit the share button. Invite other people along. Glory to God. I need you to help me in this. I have so many people. I can't. I'm like, Lord, I can't possibly hit all these invite buttons. And <laughs> praise God. Well, come on, let's do this together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So good. He's so faithful. Praise God. Some of you are already on. You were waiting. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, guys. Come on and share. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Praise God. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. God is so good. Glory to God. All right, guys, I'm sharing praise God. I see some of you guys are already on. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Waving back at you. Praise God. Sending love your way. Praise God. Hello, Miss Jan. Praise God. Come on, guys. Go ahead and share. I tried to share some. I'm like, you guys help me out because <laughs> there's a lot of names that I would have to share. Praise God. Glory to God. Come on. Go ahead and share. Hello, my sister Maxine. Blessings to you. Deacon George. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you guys. Come on in. Come on in. Let's go. Let's get ready to go so we can get started in this word and just go ahead and keep moving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's make sure. Come on. Plug on in. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings to you guys. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and chime on in. Come on. Share it. Share it. Share it. Plug on in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to continue. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Come on in, guys. Praise the name of Jesus. God is so good. He's so faithful. He's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give a few more minutes and then we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to be before you go, but I, I just come to, to empower you. Of our Lord and King and so uh, definitely um, I'm excited uh, as we are here today and I'm excited about what's taking place amen amen praise God are you guys able to hear me now can you hear me now praise God all right are you able to hear me now this is gonna be good I'm telling you all right y'all able to hear me now let me know let me know if you can hear me guys 
All right, so I, I'm I'm seeing somebody saying a very loud interference. I don't know what that is, uh, but I know what it can't be. No disruptions, no interferences. All right, guys, are do you guys still hear noise in the background? All right, let me know if you're still hearing noise. I don't know if you you're still hearing it or what, but let's see. Let me know. Praise God. All right, it's clear now. Glory to God. See, we got some, some prayer warriors on there agreeing with me. I'm telling y'all, praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us will prosper, right? That's right. Praise God. Yes, yes. No noise, right? No noise. <laughs> no noise. No victory for the devil. Hallelujah, right? All right, praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, guys, come on, go ahead and share. Let's plug on in. We're going to start in a few more minutes and just going to go ahead and get into this word. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. God bless you guys. All of you who are plugging in. Glory to God. Come on in. Come on in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Much love to you too. Much love. Much love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, yes. I'm waving back at you guys. Waving back at you. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, yes. Well, you guys keep sharing and we're going to continue to, uh, you know, um, continue to invite others to come on. So you guys go ahead and keep doing it. I'm going to go ahead and start praying and we're going to get right on into this today because I want to talk about being a believer and not a doubter. Amen. I want to talk about being a believer and not a doubter. So, Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We honor you for who you are. We thank you, Lord. You are great and you are mighty. You are glorious. You are all powerful. You are all knowing, God. We just declare the skies, declare your glory, Father. And as we just lift up our hands, as we thank you for who you are, Father God, we thank you. You're already in our midst. Your presence is here. Father God, we thank you. Your spirit is here. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that Lord God, your word, hallelujah, is Lord God, all powerful. Father God, I thank you that it is life transforming. I thank you that your word, Father God, it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I thank you, Father God, hallelujah, that your spirit is here to lead and guide us into all truths. I thank you, Father God, that as a result of your word, Father God, our faith is strengthened and it is ignited. So, Father, I just give you praise and glory for everything manifesting right now. I come against all interferences. I come against all disruptions. I come against all distractions. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be shut down. I command man you to cease to operate and I declare communication clear in the name of Jesus and I command Father God the atmosphere is conducive for your word to be preached understood comprehended and retained in Jesus name so I thank you for who you are and I give you praise in Jesus name amen glory to God well welcome beloved of the Lord I'm Tracy Taylor with Tracy Taylor Ministries International and I am just here as I want to just share uh, just some words of empowerment, just to encourage you to build you up in the word of the Lord. Amen. And so I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I'm so thankful for this moment. And so many of you, um, you, you, you've been plugged into our last two and um, you're here again and praise God. I, I pray that you're inviting others to go along. And um, as you are plugging in, it's fine. Keep plugging in, keep sharing and pass it on inviting people because we want to be an encouragement. We want, listen, I, I want you know, us, like I said before, I want us to light up social media for the kingdom of God. I want us to spread the good news. Amen. I want us to talk about the good news. I want us to talk about the good things that are happening. Amen. And so I want you guys to be sure that you're inviting in because like I said before, I'm not trying to build an audience for myself. I am awakening an army for God. You know, I want to start off with the, um, a story of, you know, something that happened to us and, um, you know, a revelation that God uh, gave us as a result of it. And which is why I believe this is why uh, what's happening now is happening. And the and the privilege and the, the platform, the opportunity that God has given us as a result of it. And so um, my, my family and I, we were out shopping. And uh, while we were out shopping, 
um, here, uh, my son had went off to one direction and uh, my husband and I and my daughter had went into another area. And so as we were in this uh, department store, um, this was around Christmas time, um, you know, uh, we had finished doing what we were doing. So we were walking over uh, to where our son was. And so, uh, uh, and so here it was, as we got over there to where he was, he was not there. And so we were looking all around and we were trying to, we was like, where did he go? And so as we began to look and as we um, glanced up at the front, cause we were all the way in the back of the store, the back corner, um, we noticed him walking back into the store. Um, and so as he walked back into the store, my husband said, oh, there he is right there. I said, okay, well, you guys go ahead and head out. I'll go get him and, you know, and I'll bring him out uh, to, you know, where we are. And so they said, okay. And so as we were walking um, up to the front, my daughter said, mom, as she said, I don't know if he's going to be able to hear you if you're calling his name because he's got those earbuds in his ear. And so nevertheless, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm calling him and I'm calling his name and he's going to the area where he knew we were. So he walked to the back part on the opposite side. And so I'm just running behind him. I'm calling his name. I'm calling his name and I'm trying to get to him. But, you know, of course it was crowded. You couldn't get, you know, uh, really close because of, you know, all of the traffic that was going in and out. And so um, I'm calling his name. People looking back, they're turning around and they're like, who is this lady and why is she chasing this guy, you know? And so I'm calling him and I'm just calling him. He, no response. He just keep walking. He keep walking. And so here it is as, um, as I'm, you know, calling his name, um, you know, um, he's steady walking towards the back and I want to make sure I see some comments saying it's frozen. I'm not sure. Is the video, is it planned? Is it going through? Is it, is it going through? Or is it still frozen? Is it still frozen? Is it still frozen? Somebody let me know, is it still frozen? Are we going through? Because I want to make sure you guys hear this. I want to make sure you guys are hearing this. All right. Is it is it still frozen? Somebody let me know. Oh, we're good to go? Okay, praise God. Thank you, guys. Communicate with me. Praise God. All right, here. So as we were going to the, you know, I'm going to go to another store, I, I'm running behind my son. And so he's. I'm trying to call him. He's going to the area where he knew where we were. But he couldn't hear me because he had his earbuds in his ear. And so, uh, so anyway, so we're going on and, and I'm, you know, uh, calling his name and calling his name. So he gets to the area where he saw, where he knew we were and he didn't see us. So he proceeded to walk towards the back of the store where he originally went. So I'm chasing behind him and I'm steady calling him. I'm steady calling him and I'm trying to get to him. I'm trying to get to him. And, and, um, he finally get to the area where he was and he didn't see us. So he just stopped and he was kind of turning side to side. You can see his body language is saying, where are they? So once he stopped, I was finally able to get through this crowd of people and I kind of leaped up and I tapped him on his shoulder. And when I tapped him on his shoulder, he jumped and turned around. And so he was like, mom, I was looking for you guys. And I said, I told him, I said, listen, I have chased you through this entire store and I was calling your name. And he said, mom, you wasn't, I said, yes, I was. I said, but you couldn't hear me because you had those earbuds in your ear. And he was like, mom, I promise you, you must not have been calling me loud enough. He said, I was looking and I was like, boy, come on. So we walk out and we're laughing and so forth. And I told him, I said, if I ask anybody in this store, who, you know, who is JT, who is, you know, they will point to you, you know? And so anyway, we left out. And so we go and finish our shopping. We get home. And so Holy Spirit had told me, he said, I want to talk to you about uh, what, uh, you know, happened. And so I said, okay. So um, we sat down, we, we ate and everything. And so by that time, Holy Spirit said, uh, come on, let's, let's talk. And so I got up and I went off into my place where I, I spent with him. And so um, he said, I, I want to uh, help you to understand that what happened just now, um, there's a meaning and there's a revelation behind it. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening, daddy, tell me. And so um, he proceeded to say, he said, listen, there are a group of people who are returning, who's coming back to where they knew the father was. He said, but they're not coming in answering to the names that I've given them. He said, they're not coming in responding to what I call them. He said, they're coming in with their ears plugged. He said, they're coming in unable to hear 
uh, what um, uh, I'm saying unto them. He said, and so he said, and so what I'm doing is he said, I'm calling for a remnant. I'm calling for my people. I'm calling for individuals to come in and to tap the shoulders of a generation who is spiritually deaf. He said, I'm calling for my people to go after those who have left the father, those who have disconnected from the father, those who are no longer in the presence, in the company of the father. And so here it was, um, I, I immediately, my heart began to just grasp to this as, as God began to minister, as God began to, uh, say this to me. And he said, he said, and, and I'm not just calling uh, my people and these individuals to tap the shoulders of individuals. He said, I'm calling these individuals to tap the shoulders of governments, agencies, and spears. He said, and so he said, to awaken a people uh, to, uh, uh, to the voice of God and, and to awaken a, a generation that is spiritually deaf. And so my heart immediately, I begin to weep and I begin to cry because I'm like, my God, you know, who would have thought, you know, that that experience, the revelation that can come out of that. And he said, but he said, but what I'm doing here, he said, he said, I'm doing it. He said, so that I can bring a, a reconnect. I can bring a reconciliation. I can bring those who have strayed away back into the company and the presence of the father. And he said, and so just as you were diligent to go after your son, he said, please be diligent to go after mine. And so that's why I'm here today. That's why God's got me doing what he's got me doing right now. He's got me here to tap the shoulders of those who are spiritually deaf. He's got me here awakening an army for him. He's got me here releasing his word and speaking to those who have become disconnected or have become distracted by all the things that are going on. And so I want you to be encouraged as the father has me in this moment, as the father has me right now in this time time speaking and sharing his word. I want you to be encouraged. Amen. I want you to be blessed by the Lord. I want you to be blessed to know that God loves you. He sees you. Jehovah Roh, I sees you and he knows exactly where you are. Amen. And so I am so thankful for this opportunity. I'm so grateful. And I want to make sure we're clear because I know I was getting some messages declaring, you know, saying that Things were not clear. I want to make sure you guys communicate with me. Is it still clear? Are we having any disruptions? Praise God. I want to make sure that, that we are well. Amen. Somebody let me know. Are you hearing it clearly? Are you seeing me clearly? Praise God. Let me know. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're clear. Amen. You guys are hearing me clear. You're, you're seeing me clear. Amen. Amen. I really don't want you to see me just see Christ. Amen. In me, praise God. And so, so that's exactly what God wants to do. And that's why even right now with what's happening, the time and, 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 and the things that are happening right now, that's why God, listen, this is a time for us, because let me tell you, all the things, all the places, all the, 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 the devices that were being used to distract people, to pull people away, to keep them from, you know, um, uh, being connected or to receiving the things of God, they've been shut down. And so now we're in a place of stillness. We're in a place of what I said, listen, it, 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 you can call it isolation, but it, it's really not isolation. I call it incubation. I call it a, a period of time where there's a development, there's a strengthening, there's a feeding, there's an outpouring that's taking place right now as we spend this time uh, alone at home amidst our families and with God. And so I do not want anyone to miss this moment. I do not want anyone uh, to, to, you know, to, to just pass over and, and think that this is just, you know, just something that's just happening as an aftermath. No, let me tell you, God's hand is in this thing and God will listen. He will turn everything to work together for our good. So I'm just encouraging you to be sure that you are spending this time with the father and I'm telling you what's happening right now 
This enclosure is bringing about an exposure. It is now exposing things. It's exposing, um, you know, intentions. It's exposing a lot of things in this hour. So, you know, let's be sure that we are what? Spending time in the word of God, that we are here able, amen, to, to, to hear what the voice of God so that, you know, as we are being, you know, our shoulders are being tapped or as God is speaking, amen, we are hearing his voice and hearing his voice clearly, amen, amen. And so I want to talk about being a believer and not a doubter, amen. And so, uh, you know, if we're going to operate in this, if we're going to be a believer and not a doubter, um, the words got to be our final authority, period. It's got to be our final authority. Amen. And so, um, so I want to go into second Corinthians, uh, five, seven, because, um, there it talks about us walking by faith. Amen. We're walking by faith and not by sight. And so here it is, you know, as, um, we are uh, observing the things that are happening around us. Let me tell you, don't get caught looking. You look up, look up to the hills from with come your help. Look before, you know, look before you look at the, the father, look at, you know, look at Jesus, look at the, the finished works of Christ. Amen. Don't, don't look around and, and, and look at, oh, uh, you know, this was happening and that's what don't, don't get caught looking because I'm going to tell you right now. What happens is when you get caught looking, you, your eyes get turned. And so what happens now you start entertaining because see your eyes are gates and your ears are gates. And so you turn your eyes to something, you're going to start entertaining what you're hearing as a result of what you're seeing. And so we want to make sure that we are walking by faith. You know, you are a water walker. You are a faith walker, a water walker, and, and, and God has put in you everything you need, not to just survive. We're not talking about surviving. We're talking about to thrive. You are not someone that that's just here, uh, making it through, uh, making it from one point to the next. No, you are victorious. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Amen. And so here it is, as we understand the position that God has given us as one of victors, listen, the words got to be your final authority because when you make the word your final authority, it will always be your reality. When you make the word of God, the period in this, it will always settle the matter. Amen. And so here it is, as we uh, understand the word of God, um, in Ephesians 2, and I, I want you, if you're taking notes, write down Ephesians 2 verses 10 through 12, because to be without the word is to be without God. Why? Because John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. So if, we, if the word is absent, then God is absent. If we have the word, then we have God. If we have God, then we have the answer. If we have the answer, then we have the solutions. If we have the solutions, then we have the advantage to change and shift and alternate things. And that's what we have to understand as born again believers, as, as believers and not doubters. We are thermostats. We are ones that changers of the atmosphere, changers of conditions. You know, you think about in your apartment, in your house, wherever you are, wherever you live, you know, um, a thermostat, what does it does? It sets the temperature of that room. It sets the temperature of that apartment or that house. It, you know, and that's exactly what we are. We are thermostats. We set the temperature, at least we're supposed to be setting the temperature of the environments of the areas that we are in. And so we want to make sure where we are, we set the temperature on faith. Amen. We want to make sure where we are, we set the temperature on the fire of God. We want to make sure where we are, we set the temperature on hope. Amen. Not fear, not doubt, not disbelief, not insecurities, not uncertainties and all those different things. We want to make sure we're setting the atmosphere. Amen. For the kingdom of God and for people to be blessed and for people to be empowered and filled with the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we don't want to be thermometers. See, all thermometers do, all they do is register the present conditions. And see, that's what we want to make sure as born, uh, as born again believers in this dispensation of time right now, don't register what the news is saying. Don't report. Don't reflect that. Don't reflect all the negative stuff that's happening. Don't reflect all of the death and all of the things that has taken place. No, you reflect life. You make sure you set an a, a atmosphere of life and begin to reflect what the kingdom of God said and what the kingdom of God declared it to be. Amen. We want to make sure we're doing that. 
And so here to be without the word is to be without God, without God, you know, uh, we have no hope. We have no hope. Christ Jesus is the hope of glory. And so we don't have God. We don't have the word. We don't have the answers. We don't have the solutions. We don't have hope. That's why we need to make sure we're spending time because when we're spending time, listen, time spent in the word is time well spent. I will continue to say that. And so as we are spending time in the word of God, what's happening is hope is coming. Faith is coming. Healing and light and wisdom. And, and that's what I'm going to talk about on next Saturday. We're going to talk about the benefits of spending time in the word of God. Amen. But as we are, you know, uh, spending time with God and with the word, listen, these things are, are, are filling up in us wisdom, knowledge, revelation, truth, light, guidance. All these things are, are, are filling up in us as a result of us going into the word of God. And so as we you know, uh, spend this time and we go into the word of God, understand this, that the word of God will bring, begin to give us direction. The word of God will begin to, uh, orchestrate our steps and, and, and tell us what path to go in. Amen. And so this is why it's important because, you know, as a believer, if we're going to be a believer, in a world where there's so much doubt, where there's so much darkness, where there's so many things going on. If we are going to be a believer, we cannot do it independent of the word. We cannot do it independent of what gives us hope and what guarantees us the victory, which is the word of God. So we're going to always have to be sure that we go directly into the word itself. Why? Because faith come by hearing the word of God. That's what Romans 10, 17 tells us. So we got to make sure we go into the word of God so that our faith will remain flawless, that our faith will not fail us. Amen. So that we will not succumb to all of the things that are happening in the world today. Amen. Amen. And so, so we want to make sure that we go directly to the word itself. And so as a result of us going into the word, not only will we get the word of God, but we will now be enlightened and understand what the will of God is. Why? Because the will of God is the word of God. And so we'll get the understanding of God knowing that, see, we go into the word of God, we'll know that he said in Proverbs four, he says that, you know, to incline our ears unto his sayings, he said, you know, to, to, to tie him, you know, bind him in our heart. And he tells us that, you know, as a result of his word comes light comes uh, health and healing to all of our flesh. So as we are, what, getting in the word of God, as we are spending time in this word, as we're going directly to the word, we're going, we're tapping into healing. We're tapping into light. We're tapping into revelation. We're tapping into breakthrough, amen? We're tapping into power. We're tapping into God himself. Why? Because he is the word and the word is him. And so if we're going to be a believer, if we're going to be a believer, then listen, we have to listen, stand on the word of God, which what empowers us and give us the what the, the, the truth uh, to believe. Because see, when you know you're healed by the stripes of Jesus, you can believe that you're healed and you can believe that you can't, it's not only that you won't get sick, you can't get sick. You know, when you a believer and not a doubter, you can stand on the word of God and not be moved by the, by businesses and things not, you know, maybe your clientele, maybe things are happening around you where, you know, it looks like, man, you know, like you're not getting as much business. You're not getting this, or you're not getting the donations. You're not getting the offerings or whatever it may be. Listen, when you are a believer and not a doubter, you can stand on the word of God because why it says the righteous will never be forsaken. It says God supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So we can stand on the word of God and not be moved by what we see, not be moved by what we see and don't be moved by what we feel. Cause remember we, we talked about that, not letting faith, faith doesn't have nothing to do with your feelings. Amen. It doesn't have nothing to do with your feelings, but, but, but we got to understand that we got to take the word of God at face value because it is, and you know, whether you, whether any person believe not, it is the truth. It is the truth. And it will manifest in your life if you lay claim to it. Amen. If you stand on it and do not, you know, doubt it. And so here, let's look at what 
um, the word, you know, because we're talking about being a believer and not a doubter. We're talking about standing on the word of God. We're talking about uh, God being the word and the word being God. And we're talking about um, it, you know, us walking by faith and not by sight. So here it is. Let's look at this because the word, what does the word say about you? Let first and foremost, you, the word says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so you are righteous according to second Corinthians five twenty one. So what we want to do is we want to put away uh, the consciousness of, of, of all of the fears and things that the enemy would dare try to bring us to distort our image and how we see ourselves and what we believe uh, the word to say. Amen. We want to put away those things. And so we want to become God conscious. We want to have a God conscious mind. Amen. We want to be word conscious, the word of God conscious. Amen. We want to, we want to focus and meditate. You know, he said in Philippians, he said, Think on these things, those things that are pure and lovely and of virtue and of praise and of good report. Think on those things. And so we want to be sure that we're meditating on the right things. Amen. We want to make sure that we're focusing on the word of God and keeping that in our minds. Amen. Because as a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. One of the other translations for that in Proverbs uh, 23, he says, as a man thinketh, or how a man thinks will determine where he ends up. So your thoughts, what you're entertaining, what you're meditating on right now, it matters. Amen. It definitely matters. And so we want to be sure that we're meditating on the word of God so that we can keep continue to go in the direction of the word. Amen. And not in the directions of this world, not in the directions of where people are going today, because a lot of people, they're bound by fear. They're struggling. They're scared. They're afraid. But listen, let me tell you, do not lose hope. You know, I shared this story before when Jesus had told in the book of Mark, when he told the disciples to go to the other side and the moment he told them to go to the other side, look what happened. That big storm began to hit and um, it began to beat against the boat, you know, and, and here it was, the disciples got afraid and they began to wake up Jesus and they said, you know, don't you care if we perish? I mean, that's kind of a crazy question to ask your savior, right? The one who came so that you could have life so that you would not perish, but have everlasting life. But here it was. Us, they they said do you not care that we perish and so here Jesus got up and he rebuked the storm but I want you to understand that you know here it is in this times of storms in this time and this hour of great uh, 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 turmoil and great distress Jesus is in your boat. He is with you. He said he will never leave you. He said he will never forsake you. He said, lo, I am with you even unto the end. And so it does not matter what's happening around you. It doesn't matter what's going on because Jesus is in your boat and he is present. Amen. He is an abiding present. He is present with you and he is an answer to everything that is ailing this society today. Amen. And so, you know, when the, when those waves, you know, were hitting, I just want to highlight that when those waves were hitting against those, that boat, you know, that's equivalent to, you know, thoughts that were hitting their mind thoughts. You're going to drown. You're going to die in this. You're not going to make it. You're not going to be able to accomplish. You're not going to go to the place where you're not going to be able to do what he said. And see, that's what's happened today. You know, many of you, your minds have been bombarded by thoughts. The enemy, you're not going to make it. See, you know, because see, God said, some things to you. He spoke some things to you in the close of 2019 and the beginning of 2020. He spoke to you and he said, you know, to you, you know, to go here, to do this, to start this, to start that. And see now, because of what's going on now, it looked like, you, you know, you're not going to make it. It looked like you're not going to survive. It looked like you're going to have to give up. It looks like you're going to have to give in. It looked like the storm is overtaking you. But let me tell you, there is a storm stopper who is not only in your midst, but in your boat. And because God said it, he said, I'm not a man that I shall lie, neither the son of a uh, man that I shall repent. So you got to trust that what God said is so. You got to lay hold to the word of God. You got to stand strong. Amen. And be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and say, I will not fail. I will not faint. I will not give up. I believe God. I believe God. Amen. 
You got to say, I believe God. Come on, go ahead and post that in there. I believe God. Go ahead and, and share that with somebody. I believe God. I believe what God said to me. It is so. What God said, if he told you to start that business, let me tell you, honey, you will prosper and succeed. He is the Lord thy God who teaches you how to profit according to Isaiah 48 and 17. So he has blessed your business and none of this that's happening right now will be able to affect you. And, and this is what we got to understand because you know as God has spoken to us you got to keep in mind the enemy would come and he always tries to come and contradict he always come to try to say you know uh differently to to cause you to shift and to cause you to try to believe contrary but he's a liar and the father thereof you cannot believe anything matter of fact what you do is believe the opposite of what the devil so whatever satan is telling you right now believe the opposite if he's trying to tell you you're gonna die because you contracted this virus you're really gonna live you're you're really going to live and declare the works of God. Hallelujah. And, and display his glory in this earth. If he's trying to tell you that your business is going to shut down, you're going to go bankrupt. What he's really saying is you're going to prosper and you're going to be so enlarged in this time that th as a result of this, when the business returns, you're going to have to expand and enlarge and open up other locations in Jesus name. You have to believe the word of God and, re and refuse refuse to listen to the devil, refuse to entertain what he's saying. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So you got to understand the word says you are the righteousness of God because you are the righteousness of God that comes with rewards and benefits in itself. Amen. It comes with a promise that the righteous will never be forsaken. That means you will not be left out. That means you will not go without. That means you will always have what you need when you need it at the time that you need it. Amen. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we got to put away the thoughts. We got to put away the things that will come to try to cause us to shift from being a believer into a doubter. We got to put away all of our eyes that's causing us to, to, to stop walking by faith and start walking by fear. We've got to put it away, people of God. We've got to put it away. And so we are the righteousness of God. And so we've got to boldly uh, declare who we are and understand that no matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, the word of God says you can come boldly before the throne of grace in a time of need to receive help. Amen. You can come boldly because that's the benefit you have as the righteousness of God. You can come boldly before the throne. It's like what happened with Esther when, when, when Mordecai had got wind of what Haman was trying to do. He wanted to destroy and annihilate all of the Jews. And so here it was, Mordecai now, um, he went uh, to uh, let Esther know and, and, and to tell her, he said, listen, you're going to have to go before the king, which was her husband. You're going to have to go before the king and let him know of this plot that Haman has set against all of the Jews. And so here Esther, of course, you know, she, uh, she kind of, she resisted. She, cause she said, you know, I can't go before the king unannounced. That would be automatic death. And so here Mordecai said, listen. Could it be that you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this? He said, but let me tell you something. If you don't go before the king and, and let him know, the deliverance of the Jews will come somewhere else. But don't you think for a moment that you will escape yourself from not being obedient to what needs to be done. And so listen, you know, how was that any different for us? Let me tell you, Esther's, I'm calling for you. It's time. Go before the king. Don't, don't fear and don't, don't think, oh, I can't say this. I can't come on here and declare this. I can't go and do this. Listen, go before you have favor. That's what Esther, she had favor with the king. And surely enough, when she went before the king, here it was, the king granted her when the, when the, when the uh, servant, when he came, when the guardsman came with his sword ready, to, the, the king lifted up his scepter and he granted her access. He granted her permission to approach him. Well, see, that's what happened when Jesus died for us. When Jesus became the ransom for us, the scepter was granted. You were granted access. You were granted access behind the veil. You were granted access to approach the throne of grace. You were granted access to come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You were granted 
access in the name of Jesus to begin to come and make a, 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 a you know an appeal on behalf of the people. And so that's what we need to be doing right now. Appealing on behalf of the people. Amen. Praying and declaring and speaking over this world, speaking over this earth, speaking over the things that are taking place right now. We need to what? Come on behalf of the people. Amen. And declare and reveal what is happening right now because this is what's happening. The enemy is trying to get people in fear because if he can get them in fear, if he can get fear in your life, he will now occupy. He will come in. That gives him an inroad. And so we need to let the people know what is happening today. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. You can enter into the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower. And he said, as the righteous enter into it, they are safe. That is another benefit for us as the righteousness of God. You have a safe dwelling place. You have a place of refuge, a shelter, a strong tower that covers you and watches over you. Amen. Amen. And see, you know, this is what happened. You know, when we understand we have been given favor and Mordecai knew that he said, listen, go before the king, do it. You know, and Esther made up her mind. She said, listen, if I perish, I perish, you know? And so she went before the king. She let him know what was happening. Of course, now Haman hung on his own gallow. And I'm here to tell you right now and everything that the enemy is trying to do right now. And then you watch this devil will hang on his own gallow. This devil is already defeated because no weapon formed against us will prosper. And what he meant for our bad, you watch the Lord will turn it and work it for our good. Hallelujah. How many believe that today? Do you receive that today? That is working for my good. Go ahead and post that. It's working for my good. It's working for my good. Amen. All things turn around and work for my good. Amen. Amen. And so here as this believer, you know, as one who would stand on the word of God, as one who will make the word of God, their final authority. Amen. We have to understand that we have uh, the, the word of God. We have um, an assurance. We have a guarantee. Amen. Amen. It's, it's like when, you know, you go to the bank, um, you know, um, and you, you're depositing a check or, you know, you're, um, you know, uh, putting in cash or whatever, you know, all you have is the word of that teller saying that I deposited and, and he or she gives you a slip, a piece of paper, uh, that shows that you had the, you know, that this transaction was made. Well, it's no different. It's no different with you and I and the word of God, okay? It's no different because, you know, you have 66 receipts that shows you and is evidence of the transaction that was made on the cross. And so you have the promise. You have the guarantee of the word of God that says, you're healed, that says you're blessed, that says you're covered, that says you're protected, that says you're provided for, that says you're highly favored, that says everything that God said about you. You have a receipt. So when you, you know, like that bank, when you walk away from that teller, you have that paper that slips saying this transaction was made and this was deposited into your account. Well, let me tell you, healing was deposited into your heavenly account. Joy was deposited into your heavenly account. Peace was deposited into your heavenly account. Finances, income, provision was deposited into your heavenly account. So all you got to do is make the withdrawal. All you have to do is go forth and look, extract, pull. Because let me tell you, El Shaddai, the great one, the all-breasted, the many, all-sufficient one, has already, look, has your account filled to the full and to the overflow. And all you got to do is make a withdrawal. But see, a doubter can't do that. Because the doubter is only looking at what's, 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 what's here. You know, a doubter is only looking at what's present. But see, a believer looks at what's promised. They don't look at what's present. A believer look at what's promised. 
And you gotta, you gotta look at what's been promised to you. Amen. You gotta look at what's been guaranteed, what's been written for you. You gotta look at the slip and say, listen, this been written for me. It's been written in the word that he supply all my needs. It's been written in the word that no plague shall come nigh my dwelling. It's been written in the word that I'm prosperous when I meditate on the word day and night. It's been written in the word that I'm successful, that that as I roll my works on the upon the Lord. He will cause them to become agreeable to his, uh, his will. And so shall my plans be established. You got to look. You got to say, listen, I got the slip. I got the word. I got the guarantee. I got the proof that it's been deposited. Success has been deposited into your account. So business owners, don't fret. Don't be moved. Don't be disturbed. Don't be alarmed by the things that are happening and what's taking place. Listen, success has been deposited into your account. You are successful. You are successful. Amen. And your business will not go under because you have a God who sits high. Amen. And he said in your word as the righteousness of God, you're blessed coming in and going out. You're the head and not the tail. So your business can't go under because you were made to be over. Amen. So you're going to be over in sales. You're going to be over in, in, in wealth. You're going to be over in surplus. You're going to be over. Amen. You're not going to be under. You're not going to lack. You're abundantly supplied for. Amen. Amen. It's been written in the word. Amen. It's been deposited into your account. But see, like I said, a doubter look at what's present. A believer looks at what's promised. You got to stand on the word of God. Because if you are looking at what's present, you're going to forget what's been promised. And you're going to start going in the direction. You're going to be like that thermometer. You're going to start registering the present condition. Oh my God, look at what's going on. Oh my God, if it's not one thing, it's another. Oh my God, look at what's happening here. You're going to start speaking all this stuff. But see, as, as a believer, you're going to look at what's promised. You're going to say, oh my God, faithful is he that promised. Oh my God, here come overflow. Oh my God, here comes another increase. Oh my God, my God, he will provide. Oh my God, look, he's faithful in what he said to me. This is what you're going to say. I am not running out, but you're going to confess as a believer, I'm sufficient in Christ's sufficiencies. Amen. I'm not running out. I'm running over in Jesus name. Amen. Because why? The righteous will never be forsaken. And that's what the word says. You are the righteousness of God. Amen. And so we want to believe the word. We want to believe. And, and what guarantees? Because like I use as an illustration, you know, like you're going to make a withdrawal out of your bank account. You, you have what? You can't just go. You got to have a PIN number. If you're going to that ATM machine, if you're going in there, you got to have a PIN number. You got to have some personal identification that connects you to that account that gives you right to what make a withdrawal. Well, that's no different for you as a born again believer, as a child of the most high God, you have been given a PIN. You have been given an access code and it is the name of Jesus. John 14, 13, he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, granting all that I am, he said, it shall be done unto you. It shall be done unto you. And so, so when you look at first John 3, 23, he said, we are believers on the name of the Lord Jesus. And, and so as we believe on the name of the Lord Jesus, as we stand on his word, as we, as we, you know, uh, not faint and, and, and fail uh, by the things that are going on and happening, as we stand on the word of God, listen, we're standing on God himself. We're standing on God himself. God is the word and the word is God. So when you're standing on the word, you're standing on God. When you're speaking the word, you're releasing God into that situation. You're releasing God into that, that, you know, whatever is going on, whatever the issue is, you're releasing God into that. Amen. When you're standing on the word of God, you're not just standing on, you know, just, uh, 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 uh you know, just unfulfilled words. The word has been fulfilled. The word has been fulfilled and there are things that had to take place just as the word said, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. There were things that have already taken place. Amen. And so forth that you can stand on the word of God and you can say, this is my promise. I take it. 
Amen. What are you lacking? What are you seeing in your life? What is fa- what are you facing right now? You take the word of God, take the promise of God. Amen. And take it for yourself. Say it's mine. That belongs to me as the righteousness of God. That belongs to me. I'm standing on the word, the solid foundation. I'm standing on the word of God that never fails, never returns void, that always accomplished what it was sent out to do. I'm standing on that. I'm standing on that. I'm going to believe the word of God. I'm going to stand true to what the word of God says. Amen. And I am not going to doubt God because when I doubt the word, I doubt him because he is the word. God said it. So it's so whether somebody believe it's so or, 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 you know, or declare it. it is so it is the truth. Amen. It is the truth. And so as we Understand we've been given access through the name of Jesus. That is our pen. That is our access in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you can speak, you can stand and say in the name of Jesus, I command whatever it is, go in the name of Jesus. I command whatever I need to come. Amen. So if you need increase, say increase in the name of Jesus, come to me. Listen, what you're speaking is the word because he says you and your household shall increase more and more. So you're not speaking anything contrary to the word of God. This is your right. This is your inheritance as a son of the most high God. You know, as I said before, the word of God is the will of God. Now, my background is in law and, and, and as I was in the law firm, you know, we handled a lot of probate matters and uh, we handled a lot of other cases too. But in, 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 in this particular uh, uh, realm or area of law probate, you know, it dealt with, um, uh, uh, you know, like uh, heirs, like uh, people who had inherited things, people who had received things. And so, so of course, you know, when you had individuals who had wills, you know, they had, uh, uh te- wills and testaments in place. Um, they had, you know, wrote in that, in those wills, um, what they had and who it was going to, you know, and, 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 and so here it is as, um, as we would review when someone at the point of death, you know, um, that's what would happen. That will would now be activated, right? It would be activated because a will is not, uh, it doesn't become alive until the person who was the holder of the will is, is, is dies. And so here it is, as we would look at, you know, um, of the will when someone would die and it was properties, estates and uh, monies, um, trust funds and all these different things in place. Um, here it is, um, you know, uh, we would, you know, of course now we would have to call these individuals, these people who were in, so we would, you know, the, if they didn't already have an attorney appointed or what have you, um, you know, we would, you know, uh, stand and we would read off and, and, you know, and, and let these individuals know what they have come into airship, you know, with. And so, um, but you know, here it is that will came alive, you know, once the, uh, the holder of the will, uh, died. And so, of course, you know, the same for us, the word of God is the will of God. And the moment Christ died on the cross for us, for our sins, it activated the will and the word of God, the promises of God in our life. So we can lay claim to it. You know, it is our right to lay claim to the word of God. And so, you know, so when you look at the reading, let me, let me, let me do to you what we would do to others when, uh, when, when their loved one or whoever that individual was that put them in their will, when they die and we would read that will, we would share with them what they have come into uh, the inheritance of let's go to revelations five, because here in this uh, text, here it is. It tells us and it shows us what um, um, what Jesus inherited, what Jesus uh, possessed, what he had um, uh, through the kingdom of God. And so here it is in Revelations 5, starting at verse 12, it says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, and honor and glory and blessings. Okay, it says, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Amen. So that is what Jesus possessed. That's what Jesus had, right? And so now because we are what? 
heirs. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Here, let's go to Romans 8, verse 17, because he says here, and starting at verse, uh, actually 16, he says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, right? He says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So now if you are indeed a joint heir with Jesus Christ, then that means just as Jesus received, uh, uh, as he received power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. So have you received the same thing? And so I'm reading your will today. I'm reading what you have inherited. So don't you go another second and, and, and confess your weak because you have inherited power. Don't you dare confessing poverty because you have inherited riches. Don't you dare go confessing confusion because you have inherited wisdom. Don't you dare go uh, confessing uh, that you are, uh, you know, fainting away because you have inherited strength. Don't you dare go confessing shame because you have inherited honor. Don't you dare go confessing, you know, anything outside of what God has given you because you've inherited the glory and the blessing of God. That is what you have received. Amen. As a joint heir of Jesus Christ, you have received that and you have the pin number. You have the access through the name of Jesus, which has granted it to you. So I'm reading this to you. See, y'all have showed up and I'm reading this to you because as a believer, you have been not only given the guarantee, you've been given the promise, but the guarantee of the word of God that it will not return to you void. Amen. It will not return to you void. And so we have to stand on the word of God and trust, amen, trust that, you know, that what God said, it shall come to pass. Listen. If you haven't seen in your life, because I know in, in my years, of, I, I have seen things that God said to me, they have come to pass. Things that God has spoken to me, they have come to be so. And so I, listen, I am not, he has, listen, he has proven too much for me to doubt and question him. Listen, you have come too far to drown in shallow waters. Get up, stand up in the word of God. You have come too far. Don't you faint. Don't you succumb to all of the reports and things that are happening right now. You stand on the word of God. Amen. Because the word of God, he, listen, it is the truth. It is the truth. Amen. Whether somebody want to accept it or not, it is the truth. Amen. Amen. And so let's, let's continue on in this as we go further. Because we have been, we have inherited, you know, riches, glory, honor, power, strength. The blessing we have, we have inherited this as joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And so that's why we have to make sure that we're speaking from the place of the position in which God has given us. Don't speak from the things that are happening. Speak from what has happened. Speak from, from, from the kingdom of God. Speak and declare who you are and whose you are. Speak from that place. Speak and say, so when somebody say, oh man, look at how many people are dying. When somebody say, oh, you know, aren't you nervous? Aren't you afraid? No, you, you say no fear here. I'm not afraid. I'm not concerned about, you know, Corona because I cannot, I, I, I will not be contaminated with that. I will not uh, be, you know, uh, plagued by any plague. I will not, you know, contract any disease or sickness. I'm the righteousness of God and I'm healed. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus and no death can encompass me. No death can overtake me. No sickness can enter into my body. Why? Because I'm the righteousness of God. You got to speak from that place of authority. You got to speak from that place of dominion. You have to speak from the truth. Amen. So that you don't succumb to what others are saying because you will have whatsoever you say. You will have whatsoever you say. So you want to confess the word of God. Amen. Out of your mouth. Amen. You want to speak the word of God because like Mark 11, uh, 20, uh, 2 and through 24, it says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain and not doubt in his heart, but believe whatsoever he say, he said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So you want to speak according to what the word says. And, and you notice it, it, it's interesting because, you know, um, Darkness feeds. It 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 once it feeds into darkness. It it you know it doesn't have anything positive. 
You know, it doesn't have anything positive to offer. It doesn't have anything positive to say. And so when you look at the instruments of darkness, when you look at the platforms of darkness, it's doing what darkness does. It's saying what darkness says. But for us, greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. We are to be the light. Amen. We are to be the, 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 the resounding voice. Our voices are much louder than the voice of fear. Our voices are much louder to the voice of doubt. Our voices are much louder to, to, to sickness and disease and anything else, lack and anything else that would be happening this time. Our voice is much louder. Dare we sit back and not speak in a time such as this? I'm saying to you, like Mordecai said to Esther, could it be that you're in the kingdom for such a time as this? Could it be that you're here? Could it be that you are one of the ones that God, as I shared early on, could it be that you're one of the ones that God is calling to tap the shoulders, to awaken a generation, to awaken a people who's spiritually deaf, who's not going to answer? Because see, that's what, that's what God had highlighted to me. You know, I was calling my son by his name, but he didn't hear me. Because his ears were plugged. And see, we got people right now. We are in such a powerful time and moment where we can reach people who were once unreachable through social media, through Facebook, through all of the instruments that we can use via internet and so forth, YouTube. We can reach a people who were unreachable. We can now connect with people who normally we would have not come in contact with because they were not going to come into the church. They're not going to go to the revival. They're not going to go to the conferences. They were not going to go there. But right now, in this moment, where all of those areas are now shut down and all we have is this, all we have is this moment, let me tell you, you are reaching people far more than you could ever know or believe to be. Because this is going worldwide. This is, this is not just in your city. This is not just available in your state. We got people from all over. Praise God. Listen, some of you go ahead and post where you're from so people can see. This is reaching all over. Post the city or the state, the country, the nation or whatever you represent. Post that so people can understand. We are reaching far beyond what is just right here in our re within our reach. We're reaching far beyond our city and our state. Which is why God is saying, listen, he said, I want you to tap the shoulders. I want you to awaken the people. I want you to, to, to you know, to, to understand this because this one was so powerful. And I don't want you guys to miss this in that story, in that revelation. Because as God was telling me this, as he was saying this to me, as he said, listen, I'm calling for the people to go after a people who are spiritually deaf. And to tap the shoulders of them who are spiritually deaf. He said, listen, these are not a people who are going to respond to what I call them. See, that's what was happening. See, I was calling my son and I was calling his name, but he didn't hear. He, he, he couldn't hear. He didn't hear. His ears was plugged. And see, a lot of people right now, their ears have been plugged with darkness and the things of darkness. They, didn't, they don't know. They don't know their kings. They don't know their priests. They don't know they're the righteousness of God. They don't know that they're God's new creation. They don't know that they're ears are plugged. But as we're coming right now as a voice in this hour, as we're coming right now as a voice in this moment in time, we are now pulling out. We're, we're, we're unplugging. We're, we're, we're moving the clogs. We're, we're removing the satanic blindfolds as 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 said. We're removing them from their eyes so that they can see and they can hear. And this was the powerful thing that God revealed in that, in, in the whole thing. He said, these are people who are not going to respond to my words. These are people who are only going to respond by my touch. And this is why he's got his individuals coming together right now through social media to touch the hearts of a, a, a fearful society, to touch the hearts, to touch the hearts with hope, to touch the minds and hearts with truth. So that they can come into the knowledge and understand there is a God who lives, a God who came, a God who died, and a God who rose, and a God who reigns. They need to understand 
that there is a God who loves them with an everlasting love who do not count their trespasses against them. They need to, they need to experience that touch. And that's what we're doing right now. We are an extension of the hands of God and we're reaching into homes. We're reaching into hearts and we're touching lives. We're touching lives with the love of God, with the encouragement of his word, with the hope of Christ. We're touching hearts and we're touching homes. We're touching cities. We're touching states. We're touching nations. We're touching countries. We're touching regions. We're communicating the love of God. And that's what was so important. He says, they're not going to respond to my words. They're going to respond by my touch. And so we got to be diligent to go after them because there's so much in the way. There's so much that's blocking us. Like I was saying, when I was going after my son, all these people, these crowds of people, they were in it and I was trying to get through them and I was trying to leap and I was trying to go around. But every time I got close enough, every time I got, you know, a, a close enough where I can touch them or where, you know, where I can reach them, somebody got in the way, something got in the way. And see, that's what's been happening. In society today, just as God got close enough, here comes something. Here comes another thing. Here comes another, you know, situation that tried to keep them from connecting with God. But let me tell you, all distractions, all things have been removed and taken out. All things have been, you know, uh, 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 you know, taken out of the way where, where God can connect. God can get back into connection and reconciliation with mankind. And so this is why it's important for us as instruments of God, as children of God, to believe the word, to stand on the word, amen, so that we can be an example, we can be a demonstration, amen, we can be an instrument to be used in this time. Amen. To pull others out of doubt into believing, to pull others out of fear into faith, to pull others out of darkness into light. Amen. We've got to, we've got to be that instrument because let me tell you, the world is watching. The world is watching. And for us as sons and daughters of God, what are we going to show them? What are we going to demonstrate before them? What are we going to display? Are we going to display doubt? distrust or we're going to display hope and faith boldness and courage to stand and say listen i know my god faithful is my god are we going to stand like the hebrew boys are we going to refuse to bow amen we've got to we've got to stand on the word we've got to stand on the word we've got to speak the word we've got to confess the word amen we got to continually confess the word because if we continually, continually confess the word, if we continually speak the word of God, let me tell you, then we're going to continue to see the results of it because the word produces. The word yields back to you. When you, when you respond, when you speak the word, the word responds back to you. Amen. It will not return to you void. It will not return to you void. And so... As I come to a close with this, you know, I just want to share with you, you know, um, as we are here in this time, you know, I challenge you, um, you know, last time, be sure to share uh, something encouraging, uh, you know, with somebody daily. Be sure to lift people up. Amen. Uh, be sure to, um, you know, to, to be a, a beacon of light and hope to others. You know, well, you know, I want to also challenge you, you know, don't, don't, you know, like I'm saying, don't give up in your hoping, don't give up in your believing, but listen, don't give up in your giving, don't give up in your giving. One of the greatest times to sow is a time in scarcity. The widow, she's, she, in, in, in the book of Kings, she said, all I have is a little, or flour and you know and and she said and, and I was going to make a cake for me and my son we were going to eat it and we were going to die after that you know because I didn't have anything else you know that's what she was telling the prophet Elijah he told her do what you have said but make me a cake first and so here it was she had given him water to drink but now 
she had to what take from what seemed to be run have ran out it wasn't running out it had ran out she had to take from that little you know and 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 by faith you know make this prophet of god this cake and she did it she made him a cake and she gave it to elijah and it did not run out both her and her son were sustained through this famine both her and her son were sustained through the scarcity and the lack. They didn't run out. They didn't lack. Amen. No different for you. Don't give up on your giving. So plant seeds. You as a tither have rights, but you as a sower have harvest. Be sure that you do not succumb to, uh, you know, the, the voice that would say, Hold tight to what you got. Hold tight because you don't know when something. Yes, you do know. You do know. We live under an open heaven. Amen. We are plugged in to El Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Amen. We are not running out. We run over. He supply all of our needs. Amen. So we don't have to be afraid. So listen, still give your tithes. Sow to your church, sow to ministries, amen. Plant seeds, amen, because when you plant, you position yourself to reap. You posi position yourself to gather a harvest. So don't fall into the, 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 the temperatures of society right now to say you, you better not. You better hold on because, you know, we don't know when and you, you haven't made this and you haven't brought this in and you haven't got this and you don't listen. Don't succumb to that temperature, but you better set the thermostat and say, my thermostat is set on blessing. The blessing of the Lord maketh me rich and addeth no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord increases me. The blessing of the Lord provides. The blessing of the Lord has sustained me and caused me, amen, to live in the surplus of Christ's sufficiency. That's what you better say. That's what you better believe. But let me tell you, the enemy will try to have you to believe contrary, to have you to do opposite. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Give. Don't stop giving. And listen, for those of you, see, listen, you already got harvests. You call in that harvest. You call in your surplus of what you have put because listen your harvest is yours it rightfully belongs to you and i don't care what's happening i don't care what's taking place see you know that's what you know that jacob did you know he 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 took the speckled animals of of of, of you know of, of laban's uh cattle he took the speckled animals and they reproduced they they created and he he outgrew his cow outgrew it. And, and, and that's what we have to understand. Listen, the blessing of the Lord upon you and upon your life will always cause you to increase, will always cause you to expand, will always cause you to enlarge. Amen. So you do not have to fear. You do not have to fret. You do not have to say, you know what? I, I you know, I, I, I don't know what tomorrow. Yes, you do know what tomorrow holds. The same provisions for you today is the same provisions that will be there for you tomorrow. Why? Because the Lord is your provider, Jehovah Yireh. He provides for you. And he is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So listen, people of God, be a believer and not a doubter. Stand on the word. Don't stand on worry because see, that, that's, that's a shallow found. You're going to fall. Don't stand in fear. Don't stand in doubt, but stand on the word of God and trust in God. Blessed is the man, the scripture says, that put his hope and trust in the Lord. God said, listen, they who faces look to him are radiant and never covered with shame in Psalms. He says, listen, your face will never be covered with shame. Trust God, believe him and take him at his word. Because he watches over his word to perform it. So I love you so much. Listen, I want to take this opportunity, this moment, because 
I'm telling you, at this time, like I said, we are, you know, we are reaching people. We are connecting with people um, that we normally would not have connected with had it not been for this. We are, um, you know, we are taking advantage of this moment and this time. And I want to extend the invitation for any person who have not received Christ, any person who do not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. I want to extend this invitation to you. I want you uh, to listen. Don't delay. Receive Jesus. We are in, you know, uh, the, the, the last of the last days. We are in. There are signs of the times that are happening right now. And so don't think for a moment, oh, well, you know, that's not really, you know, it's not. Let me tell you, it is not only necessary, but it is vital. It is vital because there is not just life here on earth. There is life after. And it's called eternal. So, so, you know, I want you to understand it. Even if, if the enemy is trying to tell you, oh, you know what? You've done too much. Um, if the enemy is trying to tell you, oh, you know, um, you, you, you know, you have, um, you know, um, you know, done all these things and God can't love you except you listen. He's a liar. Remember I told you earlier, he's a liar. Don't believe anything he says. Cause let me tell you, sin does not send you to hell. Rejecting Jesus, the one who paid the price does. And Jesus said, God says, he desired that none should perish, that all will come into the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. He said he will in no wise cast anyone out. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. So God has already forgiven you of your sin. There is nothing you have done, will do, or, uh, or can do that will cause God to not receive you. He said, listen. I stand at the door and knock, Revelations 3.20. Anyone who will open the door will come in and I will come in and sup with him and he will sup with me. Amen. So listen, repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I give my life to you. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and he rose from the dead. I declare Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your spirit and take my life for it now belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, you can inbox me in Facebook um, or you can post it here if you want to post it here, um, but you can inbox me. I would love to hear it. I would love to know your name so that I can continue. Our ministry can continue to pray for you and, 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 you know, and be a support system for you as you grow and mature in the things of God. And so God bless you. Praise God. I pray that you have prayed that prayer and I pray that you now understand and know that everything I spoke of today, you now lay claim to it. You have received power, honor, glory, wealth, and riches. Riches. Amen. And blessings just as Jesus have. You are now a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And there is nothing to say, oh, well, I just came in. So I can't know you have, there is level ground at the cross. Amen. What Jesus has belongs to you. Amen. So you are not by any means um, uh, in a lesser place or state than somebody who had already uh, received Jesus Christ. You have received it as well. You're blessed. You're prosperous. You're provided for. God is your father. The Holy Spirit is your God. Amen. The word of God is your lamp and light to your feet. Let me tell you, you belong to the kingdom of God. And now you can lay claim to the protection. You can lay claim to the provision. You can lay claim to everything God, because listen, a deposit was made into your account long before you accepted. Amen. A deposit was made into the account for you. And so you can lay claim and now make withdrawals, whatever you need, you can make the withdrawals and access it into your life. Amen. Amen. And so for my brothers and sisters, praise God. Listen, I want to continue to encourage you guys, share this message, you know, pass it on that others can be encouraged as we just continue to uh, spread the word of God. Amen. As we continue to, to release the hope of Christ, that it would reach the hearts of the hurting and that it would bring people into a relationship, an intimate relationship 
with God. Like I said, I'm not interested in people connecting with me. I'm in, I want you, the sole point is for you to connect with the King, for you to connect with God himself. Amen. So that you will go deeper and that you will know the love, the breadth, the height, the length, the depth of his love for you by experiencing it yourself. And so God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you so much uh, for plugging in. Pass this on, share with other people. And I'm challenging you. Remember your challenge now is to give. So, you know, do not be afraid of these times. Listen, this is a time people say, well, you know, because we haven't had, because people not working, they can't afford to give. They can't afford to talk. Listen, you can't afford not to give. Amen. Continue to keep seed in the ground because when you keep seed in the ground, you're going to keep provisions in your life. Amen. Because as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. So listen, God bless you. I just want to pray as we come to a close. I just want to speak even over those or if it's you or your family members or anybody who's dealing with um, any sickness, disease, if you're uh, suffering from a coronavirus or if you're having anything going on in your life, listen, I just declare everything that is not of God, everything that is not the will of God in the name of Jesus, I command it to dry up. I command it to totally dissipate right now in the name of Jesus. I loose the healing power of God. I loose the life of God. I loose the blessing of God. I loose the power of God, the provisions of God in the the name of Jesus. And I declare, Father God, you give seed to the sower. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that Lord God, people, Lord God, are rising up, standing up, filled with life, Lord God, because they've been enlightened by your truth. I declare right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that no one, Lord God, under the sound of my voice will perish. No one under the sound of my voice right now, God, will go without. But Father God, I thank you right now. Lord God, they're strong. They're growing. They're maturing, Father God. And they are, Lord God, faith walkers, water walkers, Father God. They're standing, they're believers and not doubters. Lord God, they're standing on your word and they're laying hold to your truth. Lord God, knowing that your promises for them are yes and amen. So I declare and speak increase. I speak breakthrough in your life in the name of Jesus. And I suspend every death sentence. I suspend every work of the enemy, every device he's using. I cancel it and I declare it null and void. And I activate the blessing of God over your life. I pronounce it. I declare it to manifest and bring tangible evidence this day, this hour in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I love you so much. God bless you guys. I pray that you've been encouraged. Again, share this and pass it on and I will meet you again next Sunday. Be blessed and have an awesome week.